This is a lesson on exponential equations, part two. The previous lesson was on part one, where we had the unknown in the base. Now that actually is a less common type of exponential equation. In fact, some people don't even consider those exponential equations. The most common is the type two. And the type two will have the unknown in the exponent. So I won't waste a lot of your time. I'll start right up with a few examples. So to begin with, take a look at the simplest of simple equations. If you have 3 to the x is equal to 27. See, the unknown x is in the exponent. Now, of course, this one you can fumble your way through pretty easily and see that the answer is 3 to the exponent of 3 is equal to 27. So there's your answer. Of course, they get more complicated. But the method is the same in all cases. When you're dealing with exponential equations with the unknown and the exponent, you try to express both sides with a common base. And the ones you're going to get initially are going to be cooked up so they work well like that. In this case, they can both be brought down to a base of 3. So you're typically taking the big down to the small. Although in some cases, you will have choices. So this would be then written as 3 to the x is equal to, instead of 27, 3 to the exponent of 3. And then you ignore, you drop the bases. Once you have equal bases, then you can just simply equate the exponents. So therefore, x is equal to 3. And that's really all you do, even if the questions get very complicated looking. So let's look at a few other ones. This one, right away, we're dealing with more difficult ones. 9 to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 81 to the 4 times 27 to the x. Now these can be expressed with a base of 3. You'll see that they're all powers of 3. So we take this 9, and we carefully break, express this with a base of 3. So 3 squared to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 81 is 3 to the exponent of 4. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And if you're not already, you will get good at those simple conversions. And 27 is 3 to the exponent of 3, raised yet again to the exponent of x. And then you clean it up using the exponential properties, keeping in mind that this exponent of 2x minus 1 would require us to multiply the inner exponent by the outer. So we would get 3 to the 4x minus 2 is equal to 3, 4 times 4 is 16, times 3 to the 3x. Do not drop the bases yet. You have to wait till you have one side, one power equal to another. So that will require us to take the, this right side and add, because we're multiplying powers with the same base, we add the exponents, giving us 16 plus 3x. And now we can drop the bases. So 4x minus 2 is equal to 16 plus 3x. Simple algebra now. I'll bring the x's to the left side. Subtract 3x from both sides leaves us with 1x. And then add 2 on to both sides will give us x is equal to 18. We've got her. So that's the method. Now you could not have looked at this and got the answer. So you have to make sure that you're comfortable with the method. And this, you can see why we spent a little bit of time earlier on getting comfortable with breaking things down into common bases. Another example. So I'll raise the bar a little bit on each question, making them more complicated. You see, you can have fractional bases like this. And 2 fifths, if you take a look at the, the, the right side, that 8 over 125, this can be written with a base of 2 over 5. Now they have to be cooked up at this point so that they work. But 2 over 5 to the exponent of 3, 2 cubed is 8, 5 cubed is 125. And 
this is then 2 over 5 to the x minus 1. So it doesn't matter what your base is as long as it's the same on both sides. See, now we can drop those bases and we get a fairly simple question. x minus 1 is equal to 3. So x is equal to, add the 1 onto both sides, x is equal to 4. But it's all about getting those common bases. Now this one, simple little question, but it looks bad. We, we want to simplify this, and we got 4s and we got 17s. And the, the exponent is with the 17, so somehow we have to express with a base of 17. It won't be easy. But we always have to do the algebra first. We divide by 4 both sides to isolate that power. And we will then get 17 to the x is equal to 1. Now this looks like it's a problem, but in fact it's not really. Because we can express 1 with any base we like, remembering that anything to the exponent of 0 is equal to 1. So 17 to the x is equal to 17 to the 0, so x is therefore equal to 0. So deceptively simple. Number 5. Here, luckily, we've got a common base set up for us already, which is 5. But this will require a little bit of work. You see, the x has to be multiplied into both of these terms. We do need to clean up that power. So this becomes 5 to the x squared minus 3x. So distributed into both is equal to 5 to the 2x minus 6. And once we get to this point, because the bases are the same, we can ignore them and simply work with the exponents which would be x squared minus 3x is equal to 2x minus 6. You've been here before. This is a quadratic equation. And as always with quadratics, we bring everything over to one side. So x squared minus 5x, subtract the 2x from both sides, and then add on the 6, leaving you with this. We need to have it set to 0. And if you're lucky, which we are, this will factor nicely. And I'll go right to the finished form, x minus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Set them both to 0, x minus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 3, or x is equal to 2. So whatever equation you get as a result of the simplification, you simply have to solve it. Let's take a look at a few more. Number 6. Well, we've got a square root 2 to the 3x minus 1 is equal to 4 to the x plus 2. So we should be able to break these down to a base of 2. Now that square root 2 is a bit of a problem, but if you recall that the root of 2 is equal to 2 in exponential form to the 1 over 2. Square root is just the second root, and then it's being raised to the 1. And then this could then be raised to the 3x minus 1, and then 4 could be 2 squared to the x plus 2. And then multiply that 1 half in, and that will give us 3x over 2 minus 1 half is equal to 2 to the 2x plus 4. Now we can drop the bases. We do have fractions to worry about, 
but they will take care of themselves. So 3x over 2 minus 1 half is equal to 2x plus 4. And what I would advise, because we have an unwanted denominator, why not multiply each term by 2, which will cancel out those denominators. So that will give us 3x, let's cancel that one out, minus 1. Make sure the 2 goes on the second side, so that'll be 4x plus 8. Subtract 3x from both sides, and that will leave us with x on the right side. Subtract 8 from the minus 1, and you'll have x is equal to negative 9. So once again, we did the same thing as always. We got a common base, and the fact that we had a radical was just a minor um, obstacle. Try another one. 3 over 5 to the x is equal to 625 over 81. Now, I think by inspection, we can see that we need to break this down to 3 over 5. But there's a problem because although these numbers on the right side can be broken down to 3 and 5, they're not ones that may occur to you right away. 3 to the 4 is 81, and it so happens that 5 to the 4 is 625. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. You don't see that one too often. But you'll note that that's not good enough. Because we want it to be 3 over 5, not 5 over 3. And if you think back to the negative exponents that we were looking at earlier, we're doing this in reverse, but we can take that 5 over 3 or and write it as 3 over 5, but we have to consider that that would Im involve introducing a negative exponent. So 3 over 5 to the negative 4 is the same as 5 over 3 to the positive 4. You can just flip it right over. And then we get 3 over 5 to the x. And then x is equal to negative 4. So tricky, but it works fairly well. Number 8 is looking even more complicated. Radicals and everything. But stick with the question get this down to a common base, I would say in this case of 5. So 5 to the x times 25. Now be careful, that's in radical form. The third root raised to the x would give us the x over 3. And then on the right side, 1 over 125. So carefully convert it from radical into exponential. And then we should be okay, because with a base of 5, of course, that first term stays as is, and 25 is going to be 5 squared to the x over 3, and then 1 over 125 is 1 over 5 cubed, and of course, we need it in this form. So 5 to the negative 3, so we're using negative exponents in sort of the reverse order. This then is 5 to the x multiplied by 5 to the 2x over 3, so that 2 gets multiplied in, is equal to 5 to the negative 3. Remember, do not cancel the bases until you simplify both sides into power. So this becomes x plus 2x over 3 is equal to 5 to the negative 3. And here, and only here, can we dismiss the bases. So we get x plus 2x over 3 is equal to negative 3. I'm going to get rid of those de that denominator by multiplying everything by 3. So that's 3x plus the 3 will cancel giving you 2x is equal to negative 9. 5x, therefore, is equal to negative 9. And now when we divide by 5, x is equal to negative 9 over 5.
let's take a look at another one. 27 to the x over 9 to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 to the x plus 4. Here we have choices. And some people cross multiply, and that's fine. I'm not going to. I'm simply going to take that left side and break it down with a, a power into a power of 3. So 3 cubed to the x, and I'm just going to write that as 3 to the 3x, over 3 squared to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 to the x plus 4. The left side will require us to simplify the denominator before we do anything. So that 2 would have to be distributed in, giving us 4x minus 2 is equal to 3 to the x plus 4. Now on the left side, important. We're dividing powers with the same base, so that means we have to subtract the exponents. It also means we need to put a bracket up around the 4x minus 2. That is probably the most common mistake that I see with these. So that means when you distribute that in, you'll get 3 to the 3x minus 4x plus 2 is equal to 3 to the x plus 4. And we're in the stretch run now. Get those like terms together. So that's negative x plus 2 is equal to 3 to the x plus 4. And now we can drop those bases and, s and just write it as negative x plus 2 is equal to x plus 4. Add on x to both sides giving us 2x. Subtract that 4 away, and that gives us negative 2. So x is equal to negative 1. So a little more complicated. And that's it. So those are examples of type 2. The next thing we'll be doing is applying some of these in some of the application of word problem type of questions. Thank you.